and I want to give you a couple of tips and tricks that I tend to do to make it go a whole lot easier. You can 3D print other sizes. Just like to sprinkle some on top so that you have an even crust and bulk holes in the bottom, just like that. And then finish by crust. Hello, I'm Jessica and welcome to my channel. Today I wanted to go over the easiest, most foolproof way to make a pie dough. And the number one thing you're gonna need for that is a Vitamix, a blender, a food processor, or you can also use a Thermomix, Thermomix, or Monsieur Cuisine Smart. The biggest mistake that I see made with pie dough is over kneading it and overworking it. And so that is how we're going to avoid it is by using one of these machines to pretty much make it to where you don't overdo it. So I have three recipes that I've been making over the years. I'm definitely gonna link all three below. I'm gonna make my all butter version. There is a Crisco version and one that's a butter version with vinegar added to it, which might sound kind of weird, but gives a super flavor crust so it just comes down to personal preference but I'm gonna show you how to make the all butter version because that's my favorite these days so the ingredients you're gonna need is flour salt cold unsalted butter and cold water very cold ice cubes in it and everything so now I want to show you how to make it so I'm gonna start with peeling the butter and just chopping it with my knife the recipe that I'm making only makes one pie crust so if you want a top and a bottom then you need to double this recipe so it starts out with one and a quarter cup of flour there's my quarter cup then I'm gonna take my one cup. Next, I like to add in my half a teaspoon of salt. If you're using salted butter, then you can just omit that. Then you want to put your lid on and just, I pulse it just one or two times. Just up, down, up, down. And then I like to give it a little bit of a shake just to make sure it's nice and mixed. Next, you want to add your butter. Then you want to turn this on. I put it on the first setting and you pretty much want to let it mix until it's crumbled. There's coarse little crumbles and that's how you want it to look. I'm gonna use a spoon just to make sure to scrape the edges to make sure nothing is sticking. Then you wanna add in your water. I, the recipe says two to four tablespoons and I tend to like all four tablespoons in my recipe. So make sure it's ice water. And then you want to put the lid back on and mix it until a ball forms. And so that'll take about a minute total, but once the ball forms, then you know you're good to go. Next, we're gonna roll out the dough and then put it in the pie dish. And I wanna give you a couple of tips and tricks that I tend to do to make it go a whole lot easier. So using a sill pack makes it really easy to roll out your dough and it makes it a lot easier to transfer and so it doesn't stick to your countertop. You can also use parchment paper if you don't have one of these. I have a Joseph and Joseph rolling pin. The cool thing about it is that it has these screws in the back and so you can pick if you want your thickness of your dough to be a certain height or thickness. So this is two millimeter, four millimeter, six millimeter, or 10 millimeter. This is really helpful if you don't want to eyeball it. I am in no way affiliated with them. I bought this with my own money. I normally don't use these for making pie dough, but I want to show kind of for beginners how easy it is. So again, just screwed on. And there you go, and there you can see how thick my pie dough will be. And I have seen that some people, if you have a 3D printer, you can 3D print other sizes, and so that makes it really nice. And all you do is put your dough on your work surface, and then what you wanna do is you wanna form it into a ball. You don't wanna knead it, you just wanna get it into a nice ball. You can definitely see how nice and marbleized with the butter it is in there and that's perfectly fine. So you lay it on your surface. I like to push it down a little bit and then use your rolling pin. So if you do need a little bit of flour, you can add it. Just like to sprinkle some on top and then just very slowly, always turning your rolling pin and try to give, you know, even pressure. But at the same time, that's what this rolling pin is for to make it a little bit easier. You can also use a normal rolling pin that has um, the two handles on either side. That's what my kids tend to prefer to use when we make, when we do cookies or other baking. So try to make it as circular as possible. They don't always go perfect, <laughs> that's okay. Now that my pie dough is all rolled out, the next step is transferring it into a pie pan. So if you're really nervous about how to get the pie crust into here, the easiest way that I think is to literally put it on top with a sill pat and then you just flip it over. And you can do it like that and then you can kind of center it before you pull it off of your non-stick. So that's a really good option. The, I don't know if it's the standard way, but the way I was taught to do it was to take your rolling pin and if you need to flour it, you can, but you literally just very gently pull it over the side and roll it until you have enough to grip. And then you take your pie pan and lay this on top as centered as you can. And once it's in, so obviously that's not very centered, you can just very gently lift it up. 
I was always taught to kind of lift up the edges and push down a little bit so that it gets into the corners so you don't have gapping. I like to use scissors for this. I don't know if that's the official good way to do it, but I literally will cut off the edges like so, so that you have an even crust and you can see there's some gapping and so we'll fix that in a minute. Once you have that, you wanna take your water that you had and water will make the dough stick to itself. So I'm gonna kinda of wet this area and then I'm gonna take one of my pieces, like this one that looks really good, and kinda of turn it around on itself and patch this section so that it sticks and kind of make it a little bit softer, smoother and then cut it off so I have a nice, smooth, even edge. And then I'm gonna do the exact same thing to the other side with my extra stuff. You don't have to do this, it'll taste just as good, but it just makes it easier to work with, I feel like, if you have an even amount of crust most of the way around it. Now you can definitely save this extra pie crust if you wanna do a more decorative edge, but there is your foolproof pie crust ready. So one of the ways that my grandma taught me is to, if you wanna do like a little fluted one, she would take her finger and push and kind of pinch. And that's how you get that one. And so then the hard part is getting it even. And then you get this pretty fluted look to it. You can cut out some circles if you want. I've seen really pretty designs that people have done, but if you have a little bit extra or decide to roll your dough a little thinner, you can do a fun edge like that. So if I'm putting on something like this, I would put water underneath it to get it to stick a little bit better. But the easiest method that I've seen is just use a fork. And so all you do is just gently push down. So you don't wanna go all the way through, but it gives you a nice edge. So you can decide which look you like the best. If you're making some type of a pie that has a single bottom crust that needs to be baked first, you can use ceramic beads to go in here. My grandma just always taught me to poke holes in the bottom, just like that. And then it will keep it from bubbling because the air can escape. So if you're gonna bake it first, you can do that method and you can also do it along the sides a little bit too. Here is my finished pie crust. The part that tends to burn the fastest on a pie is the crust and they sell a pie shield. I didn't use them that much. I felt they were just okay, but it's pretty much a metal ring that sits around your pie crust. And in general, it will keep it from burning. That does work, but you have to have the perfectly shaped pie crust and that doesn't always work for me. I have found once the pie is halfway done baking, you just put some foil around just the edge of it in a loose ring and it works just as well. So you can buy one if you want. I prefer not to buy one. <laughs> so I did wanna quickly go over a couple of the different pie pan options that you can have. For instance, they sell a six inch anchor, very small pie pan, which I really like. If you are one person and you don't want a huge pie, a lot of the fillings you can have or make the full filling amount and then literally bag up half of it and freeze it and then you can do it at a later point or even completely make a second pie if you have two of these and freeze one. The only thing I don't love about this type of a pie pan, they don't have a flat rim for the crust to sit on. So no matter how pretty you make your crust, it kind of slides inside, which I wasn't a fan of. So a standard pie pan is nine inches and I feel like that's too small. Nine and a half to 10 is always the better size in my opinion. The, the fillings always give you extra and I hate it when the filling spills over. But my favorite pie pan is this Corel 10 inch. Super plain, super simple, looks very classic, works well. It has a really nice flat spot for your crust to go on. And I think it just works really well. So this is the one I'll be using today. Another popular one are these stoneware glazed ones. This is a Crofton, which is an ID brand. Works really well too. And again, I like that it has a flat surface on it. These are a lot heavier where the Corel is super lightweight. And this obviously takes up more space storing where I can store three to four of the Corel ones for the height of one of these. If you don't have a pie pan, don't feel like you have to go out and buy one. One of the other things you can use is a spring form. So this is a standard classic spring form. You can definitely do one of these. The main thing is that your dough will just look a little bit different on the sides, but it still tastes just as great. Amazon actually sells a half pie pan. So it literally has a divider that you can put inside. And I think it's a really cool way if you want two different types of pies, put in that insert and you can make it for yourself. One of my other favorite pans is this Vardigan. I think it's called <laughs> Ikea one. If you're trying to get one item and get many uses out of it, it's a bunt pan with an insert that comes out and then it's a spring form only there's no spring and that's what's broken on the past for me. So all you do is push up 
and it comes out. And so this is another great option. If you want to have a glossy look to your crust, you can use a silicone brush or any type of a basting brush and beat some egg or egg yolk. And then all you do is just brush it on top. And that works really well too. I tend to do this with my chicken pot pies that I make. It gives it just a really nice golden look to it, but that's definitely not necessary. If you want to freeze your pie dough, it freezes really well. A lot of people will freeze it in the dough form. So if you don't want to take up this much space in the freezer, what you can do is just keep it in the ball form, saran wrap it, stick it in the freezer, and then just let it thaw a little bit before you're ready to use it. I'm gonna be freezing this whole thing, so I'm gonna saran wrap it like crazy, stick it in the freezer, and then next week for Thanksgiving, I'll be able to use it, so it's totally up to you. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you have a great day. Cheers.